Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to project a curve or a road network on a height field. So you can see we get a pretty smooth road that is following the landscape and it's softly blending in and out. So let's uh, recreate this scene. First of all, in a new geometry container, we will set up a height field and press spacebar H to zoom out. In case you lose the sight, you would just set the camera in the display options by pressing D to a distance of maybe 5000. Next, we are just using a height field noise to change the height. And this should be enough to now create a road. I will just use a circle. You can zoom in by using spacebar H again and put the circle flat to the ZX plane. I want six divisions to have a simple way of jittering the coordinates. I don't want to have any change in height. So we will just um, set the Y component to zero. And now we can scale up the curve using a transform node. I think 400 units still fits. So let's just compare it with our height field and you see it's still within the range. You can play around with the seat value until you see something you like. And if it's too big, just set the scale maybe to 300. We should carefully resample this curve. So first I set the length to one and connect it to my input curve and set the treatment of the polygons to subdivision. So this should be our random track generator, if you will. And if you want it a bit more exciting, you could also change the number of points. Anyways, um, now comes the interesting part. We want to sample the volume using an attribute wrangle set to points. We want to just sample the height from our height field. So first of all, the height field is in fact two-dimensional. It just stores height values along both directions. You can see here under primitives, we have one volume called height and another one for the masks. We're just interested in the height. So let's just volume sample the second input's height primitive. at our position. Now what you could do in a faster setup, you would just sample the height like this. V at P dot Y would be set to the height. And you can tell that now our um, curve is following the height of the landscape. Let's make this unrolled. So let's change the primitive to an unrolled curve like so and you can see it's really following the hills. All right, what we want to do though is we don't want to directly map the height one to one to our y position but rather to a float value called height to a an attribute called height and we also want an option for lifting up or pushing down the road. So I create another parameter and add the value to the height. So that way we should be able to lift up the road by 10 units or push it down by 10 units if we want to. You can see here in the attributes, um, <clears throat> in the geometry spreadsheet, how these values change. And the reason we did this is so we are able to blur the attribute. So you would just set height and blur it quite a lot. And in case you're wondering why it doesn't change, you have to remove the pin border points. And now you can smooth these height values altogether. You don't see it on the curve because again, we did not change the position yet, but this can happen in the next step when we rewrite this back to the height field. So let's connect to the height field with a volume wrangle and now 
get the blurred version in again. So our height field can be manipulated with F at height. And you could say, I want to add 50 units so you can see it is being moved upwards. What we do is a bit more complex. So let's first discuss this code. We basically measure the distance to the curve. That's the XYZ dist function. Then we sample the blurred height we have stored on this curve. Then we create a mask using the smooth function, which is using the distance to the curve. And when this mask is active, we will use our blurred height, this one, against the height of our height field. So that way we can mix both height values together. Let's just do this. So you would say the distance to the curve we get from XYZ dist to the second input based on our current position. And we also want to know the primitive number and the UV position on this primitive. Now the primitive number is kind of obvious. I mean, we just have one curve number zero. So we know what we get back there. And the other thing we want is the UV position. So it's just the first component of the UV. The U position goes from zero to one all around the curve. So let's just create a variable called prim and a vector called UVW. And it's just, again, the first component we want from this. So now I would like to know the height blur, so the blurred height from the curve. You could also say height CRV. And we get this using the prim UV function from the other input. I want to know the height. This is the prim number. This is the U position. And you can look this up again. Click on the second geometry stream and see it's called height. So we are referring to that. Now, what we could do, of course, is just map out the height of our height field to this height curve. This is what it would look like. You can see it kind of does the job. It's always referring to the curve we have there. Um, but at the same time, um, it is not really interpolating between the height it actually had. So we need this kind of mask float mask is using a smooth function. We can say I want from 10 meters to 20 meters based on our disk towards the curve. And we use a roll off of 1.0. This is just an easing parameter. And then we have a mask. So let's just um, use this in a linear interpolation. So we have the input height versus the height of our curve. And we mix between both using our mask. So now you should see the landscape running along where our curve has been. And we want the inverted result of this. So let's put 1.0 minus in front of our mask. And you can see our road running smoothly through the terrain. Now, just to understand this better, I want to visualize the result. So let's convert the height field. And I would like to uh, make the terrain even better uh, visible. So you would just use a, another attribute wrangle. We will call this color. And what I usually do is I basically compare two vectors. So we can set the vector CD to a dot product between the normals that are more or less pointing upwards on the hills a bit sideways. So V at N against an up vector. And the result will colorize 
the landscape a bit, you can turn off the light now and still see some kind of shades. And we can intensify the result using a power function. So that way we should have a very strong visualization of the terrain. Okay, now back to our um, remapping process. So in case it wasn't obvious, the smooth function comes in with a value and this would be the outer limit. So I can make the road really wide by 30. This would be quite washed out. Or you could make this stricter, saying from 12 to 14 units. Of course, in a procedural setup, you would want to define the width min. And we also want the max. Set both values to a range of 20. And then we just put in whatever we like. So the width min would be put into the smooth function as well as the width max. So now it should react live to our changes. Also the roll off might be interesting. I call this ease because I think this is a more common word for it. Roll off or ease, whatever you prefer. And then I replace the 1.0 so you can see the effect. If you roll off to one or even two, it will be a lot smoother than when you put it to something like 0.2. And in case you still need the mask, you can also say F at mask equals mask. So you could put some trees on there or some rocks or whatever you like. Thank you for watching.